everybody. So, I'm on my way to the first campsite of the year. Um, I'm pretty excited. It's supposed to be 71 today. Um, <clears throat> so, I had my um, backpack packed and ready to go and up my food this morning and I still realized I forgot a few things like a cutting board and like um, a spatula things like that so I'm gonna, I still have to work on that I guess um, I'm going to Shandak in New York I think that's how you say it I'm not entirely sure actually and it's a free campsite so the, um, it'll be interesting to see if it's going to be available because it's obviously approaching the warmer season. It's a tent only campsite, so no RVs or vans, I think. And it's a warm day. So my feeling is there's going to be like at least a one, um, one campsite available out of like the few that are there. Um, so like kind of half of them are going to be um, available. That's my feeling. So it'll be interesting to kind of see like what um, we'll get in terms of a free campsite. But it's on a lake and there's like nice views around. I brought my famous, um, I brought my famous non, my famous uh, pizza, non-pizza recipe, so it's uh, basically a non-bread with uh, tomato sauce, cheese, and uh, veggies, so tomatoes and peppers. Unfortunately, my usual cheese that I use for this recipe, I used up and I only have uh, Parmesan. So, that's going to be interesting. I've tried it this week so far with the Parmesan and it's fine. Like, I don't, like, it's not, the Parmesan flavor is not that strong. Um, but, uh, so, I... For this trip, I'm testing out my new backpacking tent. It's a lightweight tent that is typically used for backpacking. And uh, you don't necessarily need a tent pole with you because you can use like a stick or something. But the one that I got was a used one. It was half off on Amazon. And I think it came with like a, a, a tent pole. So we'll test that out. Uh, I was going to test out like a car camping setup because I um, want to do more trips even though the trailer's not finished like I want to do more trips so I can get used to just packing it like quickly packing up and go um, so when the trailer is done it doesn't take much effort to just pack up the car and go because it gets it takes a while to get to that point of like packing up and going somewhere so uh, we, my family has a house in the Cape, and it's funny because, like, I'm less prepared for those trips because my, my, well, basically all the, the essentials are already at the Cape, right? So, like, I don't have to think about kitchen stuff, I don't have to think about food necessarily, I don't have to think, think about, like, bath towels or any of that stuff. And, um, so like I'm less prepared in that way in the sense that like I have to think of my personal items more often and obviously now with my kitty in the last couple of years I've taken him um, with me on my travels to the Cape because my mom, my mom especially but my family likes to see him so like I've definitely done that um, and that's obviously an effort too. So, I'm getting there in terms of, like, supplies and stuff, like, this is my first trip 
with the f free campsite. I've done like uh, I've done host like a host stay, so like somebody would be around on the property, and uh, so I can ask them questions and stuff when I need to. And that's always been helpful and a lot safer. But this is my first wild camp experience, and I'm excited for it. Um, the place I'm going to is two and a half hours away from me. And that's a good distance to like, get away, but be close to home in case something happens. Uh, with my current car, going to the Cape is like four and a half hours at the worst. Three and a half at the best, and it's usually something like four in between from Western Mass. Now that I'm uh, in a different town in Western Mass, it's going to be a little further because uh, the town that I lived in before was closer uh, to that direction than where I am now. Um, so yeah, uh, so it's going to be interesting trying to like prepare myself for a lot more travel. Um, I'm excited to have a lighter weight tent because I was using the bell tent uh, that I had gotten um, and I intentionally got it for like workshops and events and stuff and I might end up selling it for something smaller because um, the one the one fair that I did apply to recently um, that said you can use tents like that um, told me that it had to be the fire safe and with the polyester base tent. Uh, polyester is essentially like a plastic so any sort of like fire, any sort of heat will melt, will basically melt the, the fabric and uh, it's not going to be that safe um, in large crowds and with people and stuff. So, so I think my plan for that is I think I'm going to eventually sell it um, and get like a small maybe used canvas tent that is fire safe. I know they have like tiki tents available that are under $200 that are fire safe but I don't know I have to check that particular event to see if like that's big enough. Um, so that's kind of unfortunate because I don't have much use for that that bell tent um, kind of in general. Other than like I was planning to use it if I ever get my homestead setting, or I don't want to say homesteading. It's not really homesteading. It's like not my off grid kind of like research initiative off the ground and like on its own land then I can use it as like research infrastructure almost um, so I think I might keep that for a while because I'm so I've still been working on that like I've been working on um, finding long-term land options for my research initiative um, that's also why I built the trailer as well so that if you like the start of the research initiative with the bell tent and the um, and the trailer. So like the bell tent could be like the kitchen or no, the bell tent could be like where we sleep or something. And then the the trailer could be like where the kitchen or something where you eat. And so like it'll be like kind of mapped out that way, kind of like a camp. So that's my long-term goal, is to find land somewhere that is friendly in terms of what I'm trying to do. I've tried all sorts of approaches, like um, exchanging my multimedia services with smaller farms and businesses um, for land. And there's There's been some interest, so I think going to try that approach again this summer to see if anything comes up 
I've been stalking New Lincoln Farm Finder um, too to see if there are any opportunities that come up. Um, but a lot of the issues that I've run into is that like these little parcels of land, they have specific uh, requirements, I guess, and you can only you like farm on them. You can only have livestock on them. You can only um, have certain type of buildings on them, like things like that. So like, it's kind of hard to find land that can do, I guess, what I want to do long term with the research initiative. So I'm gonna have to think of that. Um, I thought like. I really want to learn, I guess, learn how, learn more about growing things because I think that, like, I could offer my skills as a gardener and do some sort of collaboration there, but I'm not too sure. Like, I've seen people deck out, like, hoop houses into, as, like, workshops and stuff. Um, hoop houses are pretty inexpensive. Um, it may not be the most durable thing ever, but like they, they definitely will uh, shelter you. So like that's obviously an option. I do have a hoop house where the trailer is stored. So like I have three things that can be used as research infrastructure already, and um, I've been thinking about uh, essentially that. So that's kind of like what I've been thinking about in terms so far in terms about um, travel and my trailer and like just spontaneous camping and adventure and stuff like that. So I guess I will update you when I get there.
trying to uh, really focus on like getting consistent videos out because uh, the channel is growing slowly. Uh, it was growing quickly for a little bit and then it's, it's slowed down a little bit. So uh, it's interesting to see like the types of people that are subscribing and everything. So sorry if like this if you are not too interested in like camping videos. Um, I mean my personal channel. combination for my car and parts of it were really wet because things have been melting and that's not a good combination for my car so for best interest in terms of safety I decided to next that location and try a location near Alder Lake however um, I don't have service here which is kind of sketchy. I mean, obviously, like, when you go camping, that's gonna happen. You're not gonna have service. But, um, I don't have any other way to message people if something were to happen. So, yeah. So, I think I'm gonna finish driving. Um, I think just as I was I think I don't know I don't know it says there's a sign as you can see that says Mount Camp. Um, I'm gonna try this road, but it looks kind of gnarly to be honest with you. Um, and see if there's like any actual campsites, like with fire rings or something, because that that's what I'm looking for. Like I haven't seen that yet at any of these locations, and they claim 
claim that in the descriptions. And I'm like, well, first, the first one I didn't even find at all. Um, and now this one looks pretty sketchy, honestly. Like, there's the, the, the dirt road. Yeah, I think I'm gonna turn around because there's a stop barrier sign ahead. So I'm gonna turn around, try again on the way out, and then that's kind of gonna be. I think I'm gonna call it a day because I have to. So I have to. Uh, I filled up the car before I came to this location of, with gas, and I'm not gonna drive around because. Um, gas is expensive and I've already used up my gas allowance for this trip so I think I'm just gonna head home if I don't find unless I don't find anything um, on the way back because um, this is just kind of upsetting a little bit <laughs> I was kind of looking forward to it but I really like this location um, and I liked what people were describing, so it's kind of upsetting that I couldn't find it, but this is the first time I've ever done something like this, so, yeah, um, so I'm at the stop barrier, I'm gonna try to do a three-point turn and turn around here, so wish me luck! So, unfortunately, I'm going to admit defeat and head back home since gas is pretty expensive and you end up using a lot on these mountains. Um, I tried a couple of locations um, and it just doesn't look, it just didn't look like there was anything there. Like the second location was pretty gnarly. Uh, I know there were signs and everything, so I was warned, but like maybe it, I thought like, oh, maybe that was recently changed and the campsite might kind of still be there then they're just being more informative of the kind of area that it it is it is um but no i did not see any um i did not see any campsites at both locations so i'm not really sure where people are getting that information from. I'm definitely going to update the when I get home, but I'm starting the trek back. It's like three and a half hours now. So I should be back by 7, 30-ish, 8. And yeah, so I'm kind of disappointed actually because I had really wanted to go like wild camping primitive camping and it's really difficult without a self-contained vehicle like really difficult so far so I'm going to have to figure out um, my car camping setup because once that like air mattress thing arrives because uh, that would definitely like help increase my chances because there are a lot of pull-offs here which would make it super easy for car camping, like, like, here, um, I just did a pull off, and there's this view, this amazing view, like, I could have just done, like, a pull off like that, and the camp for the night, and, um, but I can't, because I, I do have a car mattress with me, but, um, I don't want to like, I don't know, like jack my stuff out and like set it up or something. You know what? No, I'm not going to admit defeat. I'm not going to admit defeat. I think I'm going to do that and park at that spot and at the, I'm going to try that since I do have a car mattress with me. I'm going to, I'm going to try to actually car camp. The only thing is, I don't have uh, much of anything to set my cooking stuff on to actually cook. So, we're going to do that. 
So I currently have the air mattress out and actually it's a lot thinner than um, what I am used to. Um, obviously I'm gonna need a pillow of some sort. I do have one that's actually from my back that could work. Um, and I do have things to kind of, uh, to, like, lock out the windows and stuff like that. So I think that could work. Um, so as long as somebody doesn't come by and knock on my door or something, I think it could work. Um, obviously I can't stretch out my legs too much, but... This is actually quite comfortable. Uh, even though it may not look good right now, it's it's supporting me. I didn't think it would. And I think I might be able to use it as an actual mattress, like, in general in the car. Um, but for now, I'm just going to start um, getting the bed together. So that means, like actually taking out the blankets and stuff for sending up the bed. And that's it. And that's my update. So I think I'm going to camp in the car tonight. So I just did my first pee car camping, which is interesting. Didn't go too badly. However, I do have an area to clean up uh, when I get back. Um, I mean, it's not like this car hasn't been peed in before, and my cat certainly has peed in it, um, so, and I don't smell well, so, like, the pee smell is not gonna bother me. I used wipes to, on the seat to mop it up, and I, um, I used paper towels and water, and I mopped it up as much as I could with, um, and it was hard to tell, obviously, since pee is wet, if, um, it did much of anything, but mostly when it dries, I guess, um, yeah, so I put up this plastic bag, um, in hopes that it'll block out some visibility from the road as people drive by. Obviously, it's not that clean, so it looks kind of sketch. Um, but I'm peeing in my car because uh, the pull-off um, that I'm on is really nice. It has a nice view of the lake and everything. But it's kind of public. There's, like, a few houses nearby. Um and everything, and I, I didn't want to be, like, too sketchy, um, and just, like, peeing outside, you know what I mean? Um, I have one of those shaving urinal things, so it made things a little bit easier, but I definitely have to change afterwards, so my technique isn't perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think I'm just gonna take a breather, and um, for a bit, maybe an hour or two, and, um, uh, then cook dinner. And then, and then go to bed. Um, I tried to make the car as stealth as possible, so I think I'm just going to leave the trash bag up here. Um, and I'm not going to put my window cover on because it, that's mostly for snow and it will look kind of odd if, uh, it's up there and there's no snow coming. So, yeah. So that's my plan for being more stealth. Um, there's no, no camping, I mean, no RVs, I mean, like, there's no sign that says no overnight parking or no RVs or self-contained vehicles. There's signs for no camping, of course, but there's no sign for no RVs 
or campaign prohibited. Pizza for dinner. Okay, you guys, the naan is cooking. The veggies are seasoned. I have my stuff out. I cut my finger the other day and it's still bleeding, so that's what this is for. Um, I thought it would go away for by now, but it hasn't. So this is what my cooking setup looks like out here. Um, I'm obviously not going to be camping in the spot. I'm camping in the car. But this view is really nice. There are a few cars that go by occasionally and I wonder if they can see me. But it's not like I'm doing anything that sketchy or anything. This is a picnic area. So I'm cooking myself a meal. There's a fuel tablet. Um, and yeah, so I'll update you, I guess, when I'm back in the car. And in terms of daylight, we're kind of losing it quickly, actually. So I might be walking out of this picnic area in the dark and back into a car in the dark. But yeah, that's how dinner is going. Alright guys, my dinner is done. Um, I'm just going to let the fire burn out and I'm going to enjoy this by this beautiful creek and then head back to the car. I might just for, I don't know, we'll see how things go. I might have um, some light or light left when I clean up. I might not. So if that's the case, I might just leave it here and then come back to it tomorrow for breakfast. But We'll see. I'm gonna devour this and I'll uh, see you on the next check in. I cleaned up dinner. It was relatively easy, except for the dish where I seasoned everything. Um, and that worked out pretty well, uh, actually, down by the river. Um, so I think I might try to have breakfast there tomorrow. Um, uh, yeah, I got changed and I took a picture of the lake view that I was at and, um, yeah, so I'm praying that tonight's car camp will go pretty well. I won't get a knock. I don't think I will, but you never know. Nobody has come by so far and that's usually a good sign. Although, I said that the last time and somebody came by the following morning or something. But I get, it gave me an idea of how to modify my setup so that it's a, there's a, some more creature, creature comforts. One is to essentially build a table across the trunk so that... I can cook on top of the chunk, but not on the actual metal itself. So I'm going to look into that to see how much that would cost. And then, um, yeah, yeah, so far so good. I, 
dinner was a breeze actually it was really easy to cook by the uh, river and or creek whatever you want to call it and um it's really peaceful um if you've watched lone wolf's videos on camping you know that he does a lot of camping near the creek and he was definitely right about just finding a space and like you know finding a space and um setting up your meal or something tomorrow's breakfast is just uh it's easy so i can just get up and go it's um oatmeal not oatmeal but granola but that's pretty much the same thing with oat milk um Yeah, so I'm pretty excited so far how well this this last half of the trip turned out. Um, I'm really glad I decided to try out the car mattress, car camp mattress. Um, it seems to hold my weight pre pretty well. I can even use it in the trailer too, because um, it's the width of the trailer, since it's the width of the car. So I might do that until I get an actual mattress for the trailer just so that like it's not um so if like it does rain or something it's really easy to to clean off and everything like that so I'm just gonna play around on my phone I guess for what I can um with that service and probably go to bed early I'm kind of tired from traveling and freaking out about where I'm gonna stay I'm really happy how, how far, how well this car camping experience has gone. So much so that I think I might try it closer to home um, and see how it goes. Because that would be amazing if I could do more car camps like this. Not so much tent camps, but car camps. Yeah, I'll do that. So... My next clip will probably be on the road or at breakfast tomorrow. And then I'll hit, do the three and a half hours home and I'll call it a day. And that's that. So I don't know if you guys can hear that, but it recently started to, there we go, to rain. So I'm actually thankful that I didn't end up um, tent camping because I would have had to deal with this. I pro I went to bed early because I knew it was going to take a while to kind of fall asleep. And I think I'm definitely going to figure out some way to kind of help block out um, the car lights because that definitely made me a bit more paranoid. Um, and I think the best way to do that is to do use like a sleep mask. My sleep from, I slept from 10 to 1. So 10, 11, 12, 1, so 4 hours, which isn't bad. Um, so, <clears throat> because of the rain, I decided to uh, leave early. Just because <laughs> I'm not used to sleeping in the rain like that. And I know that I'm just going to stay awake and I hate that personally so I'm going to go home um so I should get home about like five to six ish and obviously that's the next to my breakfast plans because um I can't cook out in the rain that's another reason I decided to go um home early <laughs> Um, and I also, I don't know if you noticed in the last clip, but I had a little piece of, um, 
disinfectant wipe behind the ear because my piercing back there for some reason, I never have had a problem with these second hole piercings I got a couple years ago now. I never had a problem with them. And just now, uh, when I was trying to sleep, that one hurt a little bit. And so I was like, oh, that's not usually a good sign. So I took it out to kind of clean it with the disinfectant wipe, and then I started to bleed like crazy. So I think that hole might be infected, which is really disappointing. Um, and I think I, w I just want to go home to kind of take care of that. But also, like, I can't cook when it's raining. I don't know how long the light rain is going to last uh, because I like, don't have service up here, so I can't check the weather. There's just a lot of, like, eh about this morning, so I think I'm just going to make a call and um, go home early. Although what I was starting to say in the last clip that um, my sleep wasn't bad. It was just that since I wasn't prepared, I, um, I didn't have my pillow with me. And I think there's ways that I can make that mattress feel a bit more comfortable. Um, and I think I'm going to do that because like my right shoulder is kind of sore from like sleeping on it for the same position for a while. But I was able to stretch out like at a diagonal, and if I put a pillow at the other end for my feet and whatnot, I think that can make it super comfortable. So I'm going to have to play around with that, but I'm really excited how well this car camping trip turned out to be because, um, that means I can go on more adventures and do more things and do all that stuff and whatever. So now I'm gonna hit the road. Um, nobody stopped by, but uh, I'm sure people kind of questioned me. And the other thing I like to the bed is that when I'm laying down, you can't tell if somebody's in there. Like you can't tell, my feet don't kind of like hang over the seat or anything like that in terms of like up here so like if somebody were to drive by like you wouldn't be able to tell somebody sleeping there which i think is pretty cool except for the fact if you actually went up to the car and look looked at the car looked through the car you can tell that somebody's sleeping there. so i think i just have to work on blocking out the windows and I have a method I want to try. And I, I haven't seen I haven't seen it tried yet. And uh, we'll go for it. But it's a three and a half hour drive, um, so I'm going to start the road. I should be back around five thirty to six. And, and I guess this is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this little adventure. If you like these videos, hit like, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.